Okay, guys and girls, hello and welcome back. Uh, usually uh, vehicle repair toolbox videos or Land Rover toolbox videos, we're going to take a step away from Defenders and Land Rovers for a minute. And I'm going to show you something about HGV trailers or HGV semi-trailers. Uh, this is my uh, bread and butter. Yeah, I do everything, however, um, I tend to spend a long time on these because I'm a lot of experience. Now, trailer you've just seen has a full chassis. This one doesn't. This one has a uh, bogey, okay? So it's only a uh, semi-chassis. The tank is actually uh, bolted to it. Or should I say the bogey is bolted to the tank. And basically, uh, this is the structure you get to attach the axles. On the other end is a sledge plate which is bolted to the front of the tank. As you can see here, this is what locks into the fifth wheel plate of the truck. Unfortunately, uh, these things like to crack because they're steel. Whether they're aluminium or stainless steel, they do get structural problems. And this is part of my job to uh, look out for them and rectify them. The thing is, this is cracked all the way down here. And what happens, it will flex like this as the trailer's under load and being turned and it will crack out. Handy little tool here. Uh, you might have seen these in one of our videos at, uh, at some point. This is uh, to cut a groove that's uh, following the cut. Now I've dug that in, that's about five mil steel. And like on a crack down here, I'll uh, cut this uh, weld out and then weld it back. I can only just get in there with a MIG torch and with the i can't do it with a grinder however that tool is brilliant for doing these sort of jobs now this is a kingpin and uh, kingpins are what attach the uh, truck to the trailer and we also have a sledge plate okay now this is a greased part um, which um, spins on the fifth wheel now this is a a sledge plate where the run-up ramps go and it only seems to be in Britain that we use run-up ramps and you can see how the kingpin is it, those eight bolts are only holding the kingpin in it's the edge here that takes the stress yeah so you can imagine you've got um, a fair weight on this trailer and uh, basically uh, it's this kingpin that does it now or you measure them always measure them check them for wear uh, they can become dangerous the uh, this is a two uh, two inch uh, eight bolt uh, just uh, kingpin okay and the measurement uh, i don't suppose anybody wants to know but it's 50.8 um, non-weared they get changed when they're worn as you can see this is one i changed off earlier so basically what we have is an airbag a spring hanger a trailing arm u-bolts and an axle the axle will be bolted to the trailing arm and we also have a spring eye bush. This is a lift axle and you get a modular axle which is one piece like this, okay? It still pivots, as you can see here, the bolts has airbags and shock absorbers as well. So uh, they do actually come in weird and wonderful formats. Airbags, this is the one that um, gives the cushion ride. They cause all sorts of problems. They perish, they split, and they also burst. This one's got a hole in it, so I'm gonna be changing that out pretty shortly on this trailer. And that will be uh, along with this perished airbag. You can see here the structure is starting to fail. Diagonal cords are coming through, so this will be replaced as well. They, they only cost about £80, and uh, to have a burst airbag is not good on the road, so we'll replace this. So what I generally do uh, by volume uh, rather than uh, quality is to service these HGV trailers, these semi-trailers, uh, make sure they're serviceable for the road or could pass an MOT and a lot of our work is actually MOT preparation and uh, servicing or any other jobs that comes along basically but uh, when these trailers go out of our workshop they are roadworthy. Usually when they come into the workshop they're in a, a fairly decent condition anyway but it is the operator's responsibility. Now uh, the, uh, you can see the mileage on here or the kilometres is nearly 300,000 kilometres um, there's all sorts of legalities with uh, things like lighting on trailers, and we've always got to be aware of this, especially for MOT preps. Uh, you have a side marker, and it has no reflector like the other one I showed you. No reflector anywhere within the vicinity. That's actually an MOT failure. So we've got to fit one somewhere close, and away we go. Right, so this is the uh, mainstay tool of British uh, HGV uh, technicians. Now I'll show you a hammer like this is not acceptable. What you need is uh, a tapping hammer, as we call them. This is crap. 
doesn't work. This one, it gives you a tap, 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 and you can either tell if uh, bolts are loose or whatever. You have uh, a scraper on the end if you need to, to scrape off corrosion or to tap, yeah? This is the UK Fitter's mainstay for checking loose nuts and bolts, checking wheel nuts, checking uh, nuts and bolts that are vital components in structures. You can see that one's actually loose if you see I'm tapping that, okay. Um, yeah, anything that could fall off on the road is a hazard to other road users. This is actually loose as well. I don't think you can see it moving. But the idea is what we do in the UK. I know the Polish fitters don't do this. They're quite surprised when they see us do this. But um, you have a tap about to make sure things are not loose. Uh, an inspection underneath to make sure that everything's serviceable, that there's no leaks on things like shock absorbers. Uh, leaking uh, air systems. U-bolts very uh, important, brake systems, yeah, crack drums and such like. Uh, basically, yeah, it's also checking things like pad wear and uh, making sure the brakes are in good condition. Now this is on the limit according to Mercedes even though the pads are uh, only half worn and uh, I had a bit of a dilemma here, but I still changed them out because some of the pads were lower than this. But um, yeah, we do a lot of brake changes. This is a Mercedes axle. This is a um, brake drums and brake shoes. It's still used very heavily on trailers because they're more reliable than discs and calipers. And you can see here, I've got myself in a little bit of trouble after pulling the hub all together with a wheel and everything. You look down there caught myself in the groove yeah anyway right so uh yeah brake linings can be deceptive as you can see this one's actually about two mil and not five mil as recorded whereas this one is more like uh 12 millimeters before the wear limit this is a slack adjuster it's attached to a cam when it's uh the brakes wear it adjusts the slack this is actually a uh, worn up needs replacing and as you can see here, I placed the airbag, the cam bushes, which is a bearing bush to support the cam, and the other side slack adjuster and cam bushes. Very important components, of course. Now, um, a clevis pin, tiny small little bit that should always be free, gives you better braking. Discs, on the other hand, they're more compact. You have uh, like a caliper brake chamber all in one lump just there so you can see how that fits in together just like you would have a caliper on a, a normal vehicle so as i mentioned slack adjusters and cam bushes you also have uh, brake chambers the push rods air operated push the slack adjuster puts the brake on simple uh, it's an air system and it's controlled now by an EBS system, electronic braking system, and I'll just pop up here. This has got a brain and it's a modulator, so it actually does quite a lot. Very complex bit of kit, you need a computer to access it and diagnose if it has problems. There's only three makes of braking systems, so anybody who knows this salt will know which modulator this is. Looking at the brake servo here, the uh, black part is a spring mechanical park brake. So anyway, a uh, big part of uh, inspection service is to check wheels, tyres, wheel bearings, uh, brakes, etc. I'll kick the uh, wheel here so I can free off the caliper. If it won't spin freely, then I know the caliper has issues with the slider pins. Also got to check the treads and everything else and anything else that's around the wheel as well. So uh, there's a lot involved. Inspection usually takes about two hours. As you can see, I've got these uh, on two um, lifter ramps. So what I'll do is the uh, front and rear axles, then move to the middle axle and then service that. So tyre inspections always uh, have to be really careful to make sure that there's no damage to the tyres. Stones that get stuck in between these uh, grooves, they do wear the rubber until they get to the cord ply structure underneath. If that's exposed, then the tyre has failed and needs to be replaced. And in this case, it hasn't quite got there. So if you can see that, you can imagine you have something like uh, six tons on there uh, grinding away. That will take it to cord. Now, tyres get cut quite often. If they're cut cord, or even now if they've just got cuts, they've got to be repaired. Um, the MOT uh, standards have changed for tyre. Now I check with the depth of uh, the tread and then go and feel to see if there's any um, cord showing and I can feel it so the tyre is damaged. Generally as HGV fitters we are uh, stronger because the tools are bigger and everything generally is heavier. So we turn out to be uh, strong guys. 
I'm not boasting about this. This is just fact. It's very uh, often you'll find the guys are um, bodybuilders so they can cope with the job or just to show off. And at other times you'll find that there's a, you'll find a skinny, clever one which knows how to use leverage rather than muscles. But there is always opportunity to use big hammers and this comes when the wheels won't come off. Well, in this case it has a little slap and it's dropped off. Uh, the wheels are themselves very heavy. If you find that you drop one on the floor, uh, then you need to put some your back in it to uh, stand it back up again. So basically this trailer's up for six uh, relines or uh, six sets of pads. Uh, that's on all wheel stations. Luckily the discs are not badly worn, they're serviceable. So all we need to do is just drop in a set of pads and then we'll be happy. This is probably about six hours working total. Um, including putting the wheels on and uh, zipping them up, then torquing them up. The one thing that is important that all fitters know is to torque wheel nuts and go through a torquing procedure to make sure that the wheel doesn't fall off because if one of these does fly off, it's going to cause serious injuries. The uh, difference between a car and uh, an HGV, it will make more damage, whatever it does. So the liability is on the fitter for repairs. So every time I sign a service sheet to say a vehicle is roadworthy when it leaves the workshop, that means it is roadworthy. Uh, you know you get some people that might fiddle uh, paperwork, but they sooner or later things catch up with them. So we'll always get it right, do it right first time, make sure it's safe, the vehicle's safe and roadworthy. And of course the uh, operator always wants to have the most reliability out of the uh, vehicles that they have. So this is part of my job. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll stop right here. Obviously there's a lot to this trade, but I think I've already talked enough. So until next time.